A question that is often asked to me is, um, how did you end up in the field of oral probiotics? And to answer that question, I have to go back about 10 years. Uh, in a period where I was still a PhD student at the University of Leuven. And at that time, I was really interested in microbiological interactions and how so-called beneficial bacteria could influence pathogenic bacteria. In a whole series of experiments, we could show that beneficial bacteria are able to inhibit the colonization and the adhesion of both hard tissues and soft tissues. And this led us to an experimental uh, beagle dog study where we basically applied um, beneficial bacteria subgingivally in dogs that were treated for periodontal disease. The results of this study were quite surprising because we could see that by applying these beneficial bacteria there was a delay in the recolonization of the periodontal pathogens and there were some clinical benefits. So all of this led us to go into the field of oral probiotics because this was actually the next step in the whole research line. And um, although I was, was quite skeptical at that time, I remember that uh, in one of the last Euro period conferences, I approached BioGaia and I asked them whether I could do a clinical trial in humans with chronic periodontitis, where we applied the probiotics um, as an adjunct to scaling and root bleeding. And the company at the time agreed in um, trying this uh, hypothesis or this approach to treat uh, chronic periodontitis. And again, although I was very, very, very skeptical about the results of this study, because I was not really a big believer in the fact that oral lactobacilli could make a, a huge change in the clinical outcome of uh, periodontal therapy, uh, I had to revise my, my vision on the whole concept because the outcome of the trial was quite clear. The patients who received the probiotics were clearly better off both from a clinical point of view as uh, of a microbiological point of view. What really struck me was that the patients in the probiotic group had a lower need for additional surgery and um, were actually in a better uh, outcome classification than the patients who were in the placebo group. And more strikingly, just recently a new study has been published and this study followed actually the same protocol that we used, but had a follow-up of uh, about a year. And basically this study uh, clearly showed the same effects as we have described about four or five years ago, but with uh, changes lasting for uh, at least a year. So although initially I was uh, very negative and very skeptical, skeptical about the use of probiotics for oral healthcare, I had to revise uh, my vision on this, basically based on well-conducted clinical trials. It is a quite difficult question to answer what are the most significant findings um, that we have at the moment in the field of oral probiotics. Um, because it's actually something which is uh, just emerging. So we are at um, the beginning of uh, maybe a new treatment approach that can be used for to treat or to prevent different diseases. Now, to be quite honest, I mean, without making the differentiation between treatment of a disease and prevention of a disease, I think at the moment there are two very striking uh, observations. Uh, one of these observations is the fact that probiotics have clearly shown in a meta-analysis that they can reduce the number of patients with uh, highest prep mutants counts. And I know people are going to argue, well, well these uh, highest prep mutants count, they are just a surrogate uh, measure point for to predict uh, carrier's activity. But nevertheless, um, 
The fact that it can reduce strep mutants count significantly and consistently um, means that there might still be something there uh, which can lead to a new treatment and preferably a new preventive approach. And to be honest, just uh, thinking about tooth decay, uh, at the moment I use these uh, probiotics often in uh, high-risk uh, patients and in patients who basically, after having had all the conventional treatments for uh, carriers, uh, that are still not responsive or still developing uh, tooth decay. And the results of these, I know these are cases, but the results of these uh, patients are very promising. Nevertheless, if you go back to the uh, recently conducted meta-analysis on the effect of probiotics, um, on patients with high strep mutants count, it is clear that probiotics can be of benefit there. And if you take a good look at the uh, studies that have been conducted, many um, of these studies have been conducted with um, the lactobacillus reuteri strain. So there is, for me at least, some kind of, uh, of an interaction. And obviously, in, in the future, I would like to see more large-scale epidemiological studies uh, to determine whether the use of probiotics can be actually a preventive measure um, in uh, our fight for uh, tooth decay. But the same goes for periodontal disease. The, for me, a striking observation, and, and this has been confirmed in, in at least two or three uh, studies, um, is that when you add the use of certain probiotics, because it's very product specific, when you add the use of certain probiotics as an adjunct to, to scaling and root plating in treatment of uh, chronic periodontitis patients, these chronic periodontitis patients really have a benefit of these probiotics. And this is actually something that uh, we are really happy uh, about, because this is another way, another approach to uh, treat our patients. And patients are open uh, to this approach, so they understand that there are microbiological imbalances, they understand that probiotics can be of benefit in uh, such a disease. What the future will bring is, is a big question mark. Um, we have to be honest and we have to admit that uh, what we know about probiotics at the moment is very limited. And just in the period field, um, I think we are doing research on antibiotics for about 30-40 years now and still today we cannot answer every question there is about the use of antibiotics in the treatment of periodontal disease. So it's quite strange that people ask me often questions that even from a, an antibiotic point of view I cannot answer and still they expect this uh, answer um, already for the field of, of probiotics. At the end, it's the idea behind the probiotics is obviously to, to be of benefit to, to the patient, but also to reduce the amount of uh, antibiotics that has, is being used today. And I think, with uh, although there are just a few trials, at least in, in chronic periodontitis patients, we are um, in the right. We are going in, into the right direction, and there is still a lot of unanswered questions that are open for the future. Just thinking about um, how these probiotics would behave in aggressive periodontitis patients. Or, and I really believe there is, there is not enough um, studies done on the use of probiotics, uh, for instance, in, in halitosis patients. Or, for instance, and, and this is a really important aspect in uh, peri-implantitis patients. So still there are many, many, many questions. And you even want to go outside of, of the, the regular field. Um, think about uh, after stomatitis. Think about uh, leukoplakia. Uh, um, leukoplakia. Um, there are so many oral diseases that might benefit from a probiotic approach. This doesn't mean that uh, every disease is treatable or preventable or will benefit from the same type of probiotics. 
and this doesn't mean that we have to focus on one type of probiotics we have to be creative we have to think about new ways new approaches maybe new combinations of probiotics but nevertheless this is a, a new child which has been developed and which is uh, growing at a very fast rate and I really hope that uh, researchers all around the world will take the time to uh, look into this new field and to conduct very well designed studies to finally elucidate what the benefits are of probiotics to confirm it or to find new fields of uh, probiotic therapies.